Let us pray. Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We come to you knowing that your blood will never lose its power. We praise you today because you have given us a day we've never seen before. So, Father, we just come with thanksgiving in our hearts and realize that we come to worship and praise you and only you. Father, we ask right now that you will prepare our hearts for your word. We ask then, Father, that this your servant will be able to speak the words that you have prepared in his heart. Father God, we ask that you would prepare, prepare the hearts of the people that they may receive your word. Father, we ask for a healing word. We ask for a word of deliverance. We ask for a comforting word. And Father, we ask if it if it's your will that your word will convict hearts this morning. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It's in the name of Jesus I do ask it all. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Lake Providence and visitors and friends. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who truly is our Savior uh, and his Holy Spirit is our guide and comforter. We do thank God this morning for another day. Even though it's raining outside, the storm is out there, but you're going to see why we have a storm on today. Today was very, I guess, confirming for me that today's message is going to be about a storm. And for seven years, I've been wanting to preach this message ever since I've announced my calling. And he let me preach the message on a day of a storm. So I just praise God for that this morning. Truly, we do thank our pastor for another opportunity to come and preach the word. And he's, again, so encouraging. But I I do think I need to have a talk with him. Um, he asked me to preach behind McCarroll and Corder from last week. And y'all know what McCarroll and Corder came and done last week. He blessed us, both of them blessed us with a word, and I've got to preach behind them. So I'm going to have a talk with Pastor sometime this week. And so for putting that kind of pressure on me. But we do praise God for the opportunity. Uh, I just want to acknowledge my wife sitting over there, and we have some friends here from um, Spring Hill and Franklin area. I do see y'all. God bless you. And, um, but um, we just want to get one thing out of the way before we get started. You know, I'm not much of a turn to your neighbor type of preacher, but I do just want to take this opportunity to do just one for this morning. Amen? So I guess I ask you to turn to your neighbor. Just this one time. And say to your neighbor, amen. Okay. Now that you've practiced that, I want you to use that during this sermon. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. You already got your practice in, so I'm going to make sure y'all do that for me. Amen. Praise God. Turning your Bibles to Matthew, the 14th chapter. We're going to be looking at verses 22 through 30, and parts of 31. Matthew, the 14th chapter. I mentioned earlier about, uh, ever since I announced my calling, I've been one to, I've been one to preach this sermon for years. I've been asking God to allow me to preach this sermon, and for years I've had notes and been going over notes for years, and he finally said yes to me, and I praise God, but I did not know that a storm was in the forecast for the day, but he allowed me to preach this sermon on today. You'll see why in a minute. And the Bible says, starting with verse 22, and straightway Jesus compelled his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side 
while he sent while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain by himself to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the middle of the sea, tossed with waves. For the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, Lord, save me. Again, verse 30. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. We want to use for a title this morning, I'm sinking and I can't get up. In this passage, you will see that Jesus has gone up and to a mountain to pray, and he's there alone. And the disciples are in a ship. We may call it a large boat. And the ship has made its way in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. And the ship is tossed about by winds and by waves. And Jesus comes down off the mountain and heads towards the disciples. Now, Jesus is not in a canoe. Jesus is not on a raft. Jesus is not on a surfboard. The Bible says that Jesus is walking on the sea. And the disciples see this, and they are afraid, thinking that it is a ghost. But Jesus tells them, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Isn't it a blessing to know that when we have storms, that Jesus is there right there with us in the midst of the storm? Isn't that a blessing? That's when you're supposed to use your amen, your practice on right there. Peter says, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come. And notice here that Jesus did not say, make sure you keep your eyes on me. But Jesus just said simply, come. And Peter walked on the water to go to Jesus. And the Bible says, the Bible says Peter walked on the water to go to Jesus. My brothers and sisters, we are looking at a miracle in the Scriptures this morning. Peter is doing something that he never done before. And don't you know, as followers of Christ, he can give us the power to do things that we thought that was never possible before. Do I have a witness in the house this morning? He can do these type of things for our good and for his glory. He can take a young boy from a single parent home and raise him up in the projects of Columbia, Tennessee, and raise him up with lots of love and a little money, save him, grow him up to preach the word of God, grow him up to preach the word of God in his house, grow him up to preach the word of God in the jail house, grow him up to preach the word of God in his house. Ain't that right, Sister Dooley? And that young boy is standing right here before you today. By the way, Sister Dooley said amen. <laughs> but when he saw the wind violent and boisterous, he was afraid. Again, he was afraid when they were on the ship. He was afraid. And then when he got under the water, he was afraid. And the Bible says, and beginning to sink. Now, Webster's describe or defines uh, sinking like this. It says to fall or to drop. 
descend into or to descend below the surface. Another definition that Webster gives us is to fall or collapse from weakness. That's going to make sense to you a little later. But Peter was not, one thing about Peter was he was not unfamiliar with water. In fact, Peter, if you know anything about him, was a fisherman. And in fact, later after Jesus' resurrection, Peter and six other disciples were fishing and had not caught any fish. And Jesus appeared to them and stood on the shore. But you know what? They did not recognize him. But Jesus told them, cast the net on the right side of the ship and ye shall find. Well, what Jesus was saying was, when you cast that net on the right side of the ship, you're going to find that your net's overflowing with fish. And once Peter found out that it was Jesus, he cast himself into the sea and he dragged the net to the shore. So we see here that Peter was familiar with water. So in our text today, you can say that he knew how to swim, but if he went under, he would have to swim in a storm. Now, that's a title for another sermon in the future, He Will Swim in a Storm. But we're not going to go there this morning. But Brother Peter would not have to rely on his own skills on today. Matthew records, Matthew being an eyewitness of uh, this event doesn't record how far Peter sank, nor did he record how far Peter walked on the water. And you understand that Matthew was in the ship watching all this happen. But the Bible says as he began to sink, but now I'm not going to stand here and criticize Peter for being afraid. You know, Peter, Peter uh, when he saw the violent wind, he, he probably done a lot of things like what we have, would have done. But I'm just stating the facts that what Peter done. Peter reminds me of me and maybe two or three other people in the congregation this morning. And I know most of you have been saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost all your life. I can tell by the brightness of your halos this morning. But as Jesus walks towards us through his word, we tend to get off course from what he tells us to do. And I believe God knows that, and that's why we have grace. That's why we have grace. And you maybe remember the disciples were afraid when another storm arose up and Jesus was asleep in the stern of the ship. And they woke Jesus up and said unto him, Master, carest not that we perish? And Jesus rebuked the wind and the storm and, and, the storm and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Peter also witnessed Jesus feeding 5,000 men plus women and children with two fish and five loaves of bread. But he still was afraid. I believe Brother Mark can help us see why Peter was so fearful. In the gospel according to Mark, Mark records this event also. And one thing that Mark says about the disciples is, they understood not the miracle of the loaves, for their hearts were hardened. In other words, they could not grasp the fact that Jesus was God, that Jesus was God and man at the same time. So therefore, they experienced fear by not realizing that he was truly the one who's going to come and die for their sins. And how many of us can testify that our journey with Christ consists of us focusing on our storms and our trials too much and not coming to Christ with all we have? We know the Lord is there, but the things going on around us have got our attention. Do we have any witnesses in the house that this happened to? But something beautiful happens in this text after seven years of praying over this text, something beautiful happens that I never saw before. And I'm going to help you see what I'm talking about. Here it is. 
Peter recognized he was sinking. Peter recognized, he realized he was falling and he couldn't get up. It appears that Peter couldn't help himself. It appears that his co-laborers in the ship was not going to get out of the ship and come over there and help him. It appears that the backstroke and the freestyle stroke and also the butterfly stroke was not going to get him out of trouble. But there is something else that I recognize in this scripture, and I praise God for it. He not only recognized that he was sinking, but he recognized his descent from the very beginning. Do you realize how key that is? Peter didn't wait to call on the Lord, but the Bible says in beginning to sink, he cried out. We don't know if he sank an inch. We don't know if he sank the foot. We don't even know if he sank two feet. But as soon as he fell, soon as he started to fall, praise God, he knew exactly what to do. I praise God today that Peter made the best decision of his life. He not only made the best decision, but he chose his best option. He cried out, Lord, save me. Have you ever had to cry out, Lord, save me before? Have you ever had to do that? You, then you know what I'm talking about. How many times have Peter messed up? How many times has he messed up and done the wrong thing? But this time, Peter got it right. He cried to the right person, Lord. He cried for the right thing, save, and he cried for the right person himself. But what is the message for us today? What is our lesson? Don't you know that there are some people, some Christians, saved, sanctified folk, full of the Holy Ghost, followers of Christ that are sinking and don't even realize it? Do you know that today? Some are in the midst of sinking and have not called on the Lord because they like where they are. They don't want to get close to the Lord, so they don't call them. They're comfortable where they're at. So they don't call on him. Some have not considered the consequences and the dangers of their sins, so they don't call on him. Some have been sinking so long that they have decided to stop coming to church house and won't cry out to the Lord. Do you know anybody like that? Is there anybody like that in your family, your friends, and your loved ones? Some have made a bad decision during the, their storms to where they have where they have drowned in their situation and their circumstances and won't cry out, Lord, save me. Sisters, I need for you to help me out right quick. Will you help me out? That means yes. You should answer yes. Amen? I need your help, sisters. You just got your nails done. You just got your hair did. You wearing your Sunday best. You're driving down I-24, I-65, and I-40, and you're in a storm. And all of a sudden, you have a flat tire. Who are you going to call on? <laughs> Lord Jesus. And then you're going to call somebody for help. Y'all look slow on that one. I don't know you're going to wake up this morning. But you're going to call somebody. You're not just going to sit there and just wait and wait and wait and not say anything. You're not going to drown in your situation. You're going to call somebody. You know you will. I promise you, you will. <laughs> but the next part of this miraculous event blesses my heart so much. The Bible says immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand. And he caught him. Isn't that a blessing today? Won't he catch you in your mess? Won't he catch you before you get too deep in your mess? Won't he protect you from the sharks that are out there, from the barracudas that are out there waiting on you? Won't he catch you? Won't he save you? Won't he save you from getting swallowed up by the big whale? Won't he save you for those people like the stingrays that want to sting you and zap you? 
from your joy? Won't he save you? The psalmist David said this, and I, I love it so much. He says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his ways. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. Well, why, David? David tells us why. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. But Jesus not only caught Peter in verse 31, he had a word for Peter as well. He said, O oh, thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Well, what, are, what, what are you saying, Jesus? Body of Christ, as you run this race, just know that storms are on the radar. And if your faith is weak, it can keep you from getting closer to Christ and cause you to sink. So when the storms come, yes, I did say when, Cry out to the Lord, Lord, save me. Brothers, when that sister steps to you, that's not your wife, and she says she want to have Bible study in her home, I just want to let you know that you're in a storm. You're sinking. You're sinking. But how are we going to, what is the solution to today? Cry out, Lord, save me. And he'll reach out his hand and catch you. Sisters, when that brother steps to you, ain't got no job. And he wants to be your boo. And he come talking crazy to you. I just want to let you know that you're in a storm. You're in a storm. And you, even if you entertain the thought, you're sinking. You're sinking. You need to cry out, Lord, save me. And he'll reach down and he'll grab you and he'll catch you. If you like to take a little nip every once in a while, and one drink leads to another, and another, and another, I just want to let you know that you're in a storm. You're sinking. You're sinking. You need to ask the Lord to save you, and he'll save you. He'll save you. All you got to do is call on him. Oh, I know it's somebody out here like to play the lottery. I know it is. Oh, I just struck a nerve. You're taking your tithe money and you're playing the lottery. You're thinking you're going to hit it sooner or later. And then I give the money to the church. You're sinking. You're in a storm. You're sinking. You need to cry out, Lord, save me. And he'll pick you up. He'll pick you up. I promise you he will, but we got to trust him. If you're in a same-sex relationship, oh, he went there. Yeah, I did. I want to let you know you're in a storm. You're sinking. You're sinking. You need to cry out, Lord, save me, and I promise you he'll save you. I promise you he will save you. Two brothers by the name of James Rowe and Howard E. Smith wrote these words. They wrote these words as, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me, now safe am I. Did you hear the testimony in the song? Brothers and sisters, I come to a close. I just want to let you know that there are times in your life when you're going to be facing storms and you're going to look at that storm and, 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 and just, just don't have any hope. Your faith is going to be tested. But I, I, just, I just admonish you today that don't look at the storm. Don't look at the storm. Keep your mind stayed on Jesus and come to him as you are. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the body of Christ, you're going to be challenged every day. Your faith is going to be challenged every day. Your Christianity is going to be challenged every day. But I just admonish you today, when those storms come, and if you begin to sing, you need to call on the Lord today. I promise you he will save you. We just seen evidence of that in the Scripture. And then if you don't know Christ in the pardons of your sins, if you don't know Christ, we need to 
pray that sinner's prayer on this morning. And that is, Lord, save me. And I promise you, he will save you. Will you pray that prayer this morning? Those of you that don't know Christ, will you pray that prayer? You've been down there too long. You need to get up. You need to get up. Don't wait another Sunday before you pray that prayer. And as we stand, the doors of the church are open. Who will come today and say, I'm tired of sinking? I'm tired of being in the mess that I'm in. Who will come today and make that confession of faith? I know that there are some out here that are dealing with a weak faith this morning. But I just want to admonish you, you don't have to have a weak faith. Just put your trust in Jesus today. He will catch you in the situation that you're in, and he will pull you out. Amen. God bless you. Praise God.